Greetings and salutations. My name is Tish and welcome to the Artist Haven, where home plus art equals heart. In tonight's live video broadcast, it is Tish Talk. And tonight I have one of the most awesome people on the interwebs. He really doesn't need an introduction, but he is a really great guy and I'm really pleased to call him my friend and I'm even more pleased to introduce to you, hopefully he's back, <laughs> Chris from Desert Pours. Hello, Hi. everybody. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew it. I, I knew you're, you're going to make me snort by the time the day is over <laughs> or the night's over. <laughs> okay, I got to turn off my alarm, my... Uh, there we go, my notifications, because my phone went off right there. And it's like, no, don't do that. Okay, <laughs> so um, why don't you give us a brief introduction of yourself, Mr. Desert Man? Hello, my name is Chris. I'm from Arizona. I've been YouTubing since September of last year. I've also only been painting since September of last year. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. You just have it born in you. I just decided, hey, I saw it on YouTube one day and was like, I could do that. And <laughs> my wife took me to Hobby Lobby for the first time that I got to buy stuff for myself. And I've been hooked ever since. So it is, it is very addicting. It is very, very addicting. So where can we find you online? Are you do you have an Etsy store or you just sell through Facebook or what, where are you? I am right here. <laughs> <laughs> I I attempted to start a website. Um, for it's probably still active now, uh, desertpours.com, but I've not kept up with it and going back and forth with everything else with all the other social medias. I've not been able to Absolutely. keep it up to date. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Um, I just sell anything if you, they would, direct me by email from okay. my YouTube channel for right okay. now. Okay. So email is the best way to get a hold of you. If they see something yep. they love on one of your, on one of your uh, videos, which have been very inspirational to me, I must say there's been more than one. I know there was one, one, one recently, the one that looked like strawberry cheesecake. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, so, so I got that a lot, that it looked oh. like either strawberry ice cream or some kind of cheesecake. Yeah, it looked like cheesecake, and I love cheesecake. That's like one of my one of my guilty pleasures. So <laughs> let's let's take a moment and say hello to the people in chat. We've got Evelyn Warner and Brooke and Jason and Marilyn and Gina Bina. And who else? Blair says I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> That's so awesome. And Jay is here too, one angry Italian. The angry Italian, yes. He's not so angry. I don't know why he says that. He's actually a really nice guy. It's a good name though. I like it. It is. It is a good I'm name. a little it's jealous. A good, it's a good gamer handle. <laughs> Let's see who else we got here. Do -do -do, scrolling, scrolling, and there's Doris is here. Hello, Doris. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Doris. El Spicy is here. Hello, El hello, Spicy. Mr. Lee. I always have to put a Mr. Lee in front of or Mr. in front of stuff. And Steve <laughs> Howard is here. Welcome, neighbor. He's another neighbor. I say neighbor because they live, you know, like a whole state over. So right. <laughs> all right. What while we're talking tonight, what are you going to be working on? I'm going to. I just started like the last couple videos, um, probably just the last video I did, uh, was a kiss cup with an open cup combination. That sounds interesting. And I don't think I, you released a video this morning and I don't think I saw it. I think it released when I was meditating. <laughs> um, no, I didn't have a video today. Oh, I, mine was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I got a notification. I got the vibration of my phone, and <laughs> well, in the middle of good, meditating. Good, good. Like, Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So um, any particular color palette? Are you going for cools? You just kind of going with what you got? I'm going to go with some uh, folk art berry wine. Okay. Ooh. Uh, folk art, mm, what is it? Moon yellow. Okay. Uh, some ocean breeze, kind of turquoise <laughs> And probably... Antique copper. Ooh, is that the the um, what brand is that? Do you remember? Uh, it's the folk art metallic. What, folk art, okay. Oh no, that's Warren Penny that the, that the extreme sheen is in. Warren Penny, that one is my favorite, I think. But I love copper. I love all the coppers. Unless they're pulling me over, then I don't. And what do we have for a beverage tonight, sir? Of course. <laughs> it's my beer, of course. Beer, beer. Oh, and I'm supposed to mention something about a beer that Brooke has. Um, she Yang. got it. No, she got a different beer, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was like it's called Big Poppy. Big Poppy. Or Big Pappy. Big Pappy. There we go. It's a, a double IPA what she said Ooh. she said to tell you in the green room but we had technical difficulties and i never got to tell you so <laughs> we didn't have a green room meeting except are you ready okay go yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty much it it's like <laughs> go <laughs> okay well tonight i am actually going to do my best at doing some balloon pours um i got some of these um golden liquid paints um, wow, that's really whited out. Let me move my light a little bit. There we go. Um, I got a whole package of these as a gift to me. Um, and I was had them on my wish list because I wanted to use them in bloom pours. Well, now I got them, so now I got to do bloom pours. And I, well, actually, I, would, I need to make a wish list. <laughs> hey, Amazon is a wonderful thing because I've gotten a few things from Amazon. But, um, and I didn't have to buy them. They were gifts to me. And that's awesome. When people send me right gifts, it's like, it's like Christmas every day. <laughs> but um, Donnie actually has a video on his channel. I put the, the link to that video. And I also put a link to Chris's channel down in the description box below. Um, but Johnny has a great video to like concise, consolidated, super quick. Here's what you need to know. Now go make some shit. You know, <laughs> so, uh, his bloom pours. Yeah, his bloom pours. Yeah, are, that was, I, I saw that one. That's really good. So um, I actually got a little bit of time to talk with him today. I'm like, OK, what consist consistency am I going for here? Because my flow trawl was really thick. And so we got we talked about it and got the consistencies right. And now I've been doing some really radical bloom pours. So and I even made cell activator in purple black and white and i have one mm -hmm. that i'm going to be making in green but i didn't get a chance to do it because of technical difficulties <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be on the list for later tonight um but that's what i'm gonna be working on while we're talking here so um where did you the chit chat <laughs> yeah the little chit chat well the, i don't know if that's a midwest thing or if that's a girl thing or if it's a midwest girl thing i don't know but chit chat i am neither weird. Well, I know you're neither. <laughs> I'm very well that you're neither. And I would hope that, you know, your wife would know that too. So <laughs> I'm sure she does. <laughs> so where did you grow up? I grew up uh, mostly in Pennsylvania. I was an army brat. Okay. Um, and I, gosh. When I was in like first grade, maybe kindergarten, we moved to California. Um, and then my dad got stationed over in Japan. So we went to Japan for a couple of years. Wow. And then uh, we went back to Pennsylvania when I was in, oh, I don't know, third grade or something. And that's where I stayed until I joined the military when I was 18. Okay. And you and were in the Army? I was in the Army. And then I moved around from place to place after that. So, did, uh, did you? Uh, you've been married to your wife for what? Twenty-three years, you said. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. 
That's even more impressive. I can't imagine handling one person for 26 years. La last week, 26 years. 26 years. Wow. That's that to me, especially, you know, people live, we live in a disposable society and marriages are that way too. So I give kudos to you and your wife for sticking each other out for 26 years, you know? It's well, a, we've got, we've got a really cool story if you don't mind. No, no. I, if you want to share go for it. Okay. Um, so I was stationed at Fort Bragg in North Carolina mm -hmm. and uh, my best friend married her best friend we didn't know each other before that. We met at the wedding. Okay. Um, we didn't like each other. She <laughs> was living in California at the time, but she came to North Carolina for the wedding. She went back to California uh, for about a month. She came back out to North Carolina. Uh, we started dating and were married three weeks later. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that. That is a story. The Holy Hannah. Three weeks later, you were married. Yep. And you're still. That's a, okay. That's the miracle thing to me, though, is that you were married after three weeks, and, we're, and, and you're we're still, still married. married. Yep. You don't. Twenty six years. Other. You haven't like. Oh no. You know, no. Off. And we stay home together all day. So. And you don't kill each other. Wow. No, not at all. I need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would kill somebody. No, maybe not. No, I, you know, if I had the right person, I wouldn't, I'd be, I'd be okay. But they'd have to put up with a lot from me because I'm kind of high maintenance. I talk a lot, a lot. Cause I've been, I, I oh, you know. we definitely talk a lot. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So do you have, um, do you have any tricks or tips that you, use to um, attain your goals or um, or like a, a, a plan that you have? Do you have any hits or tips for those out there that um, maybe are have, wanting to start a YouTube channel or, or, you know, keep their marriage together after 26 years? <laughs> Do you have anything <laughs> that you would give uh, them? Talk, but be also willing to listen. So okay. um, as far as being married, and that's really – the only advice on that I can give, uh, <laughs> I really don't know. We just click. So, yeah, that's, that, um, that is awesome. I'm like, I'm like getting all her as, over here. <laughs> <laughs> as far as YouTube, if you're thinking about it, just do it. Just start. It doesn't matter what equipment you have, make it work, stack your phone on a bunch of boxes and figure it out and just start doing it so okay that that that's kind of you know that's kind of the thing because you film all your videos on your phone right i sure do i have a samsung galaxy s9 plus i think okay so your phone's about and two years old ish so it's two not, or three yeah yeah because it, it it you know People are saying, well, I don't have a camera. Yeah, you, do you have a cell phone? You've got a cell phone. I started on my first couple videos were on a Galaxy S4. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that's an old phone. That's a really old phone. <laughs> but, you know, that, and that's just it. As long as it does 720p, which is, you know, or 10, 1080p, you know, you don't have to do 4K. You don't have to have the fancy microphone. I mean, all your videos, you play the awesome music. You know, you don't talk. The only time we get to hear your voice is when you're on Artapalooza. <laughs> That's only because I can't stand the sound of my own voice. Like oh. in, in my headphones and stuff, I can just hear myself echoing and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> um, but it also, like I've said before, it's just the talking to myself thing. I just can't, it's just not a natural thing to stare at the wall and be like, hi, everybody. Hi. I just, I don't know how you do it because I cannot, that's one thing I can't do is have a conversation with nobody else around. <laughs> I talk to myself all day long. So <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, woman? That's usually what it is. <laughs> so, okay. Um, 
as a creative, um, what helps you find or keep your motivation? Uh, that's a good question. Um, when I first started way back when, <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it was, um, I just liked what other people were doing. So I tried to emulate it and then I decided, okay, well I can do all that stuff. I can do ring pours. I can do, you know, all these other pours just like everybody else is doing them. So let's try and do it in my own style and just right. try to find different ways to do things and not make it look like everybody else's. Right. Well, yeah. Take, take inspiration, not copy. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and if, I, if somebody I think... used a certain color palette, I would be like, Oh, okay, I'll do that. But then I'll also, you know, if somebody does a ring cup with it or a ring pour, I'll do it with a flip cup just to see how it comes out. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, then I just go over it and try again. Sorry, I muted my microphone. <laughs> Why do I want to blow in your Waving ear? your own hands. I, I, want to, I didn't want to blow in your ear. I don't want your you know, wife to be jealous or come after me or anything. <laughs> so where do you find your inspiration since we talked about that a little bit? Um, I, you know, whatever I see other people doing, I follow a lot of people on YouTube. Um, Instagram's got a lot of people that I don't get in contact with on YouTube because they're all from different countries. Um, and I don't know, trying to get your videos out in other countries is extremely difficult for some reason. Um, but on Instagram, I post little clips in my videos and I get a lot of content, um, advice from other people from especially like Russia, um, Brazil, stuff like that on Instagram. So, but I also like last night I didn't sleep very well. Um, but like I was like half asleep and thinking, okay, I need to do another pour. What can I do? And in like a half dream state, I thought of something and I was like, Oh, okay, that's what I'll do. So I woke up and did it. And I think, you know, honestly, as creatives, or even if you're only like a little bit creative, I think that's where a lot of our, our inspiration comes from is just seeing something in everyday life, you know, a video that you watch and it doesn't really hit you until you go to sleep. And then you wake up, you wake up in the middle of the night going, damn, that's a good idea. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, so. I always, anytime I go to a store or something, I'm, I'm always looking, um, you know, just at, you know, shirts or towels or just any color combination that is out there being like, oh, hey, I can try that. I can probably do something like that with paint. Yeah. I think, you know, you're a dude, but go walk down the makeup aisles. Because the makeup, the makeup aisles they have really <laughs> cool palettes. They have really cool colors that really go well together. So, and that way you're kind of trendy too. That's that's right. what I do for a lot of my art projects. I'll go walk the makeup aisles, or I'll go, um, I'll go walk like um, in the flower, like in the well. For us here in Minnesota, you can only walk the flowers in the summertime. But I'll go walk the flowers and see what's blooming, and then that'll inspire me or go for a walk in, in one of the parks, you know, cause you know, I, I get that though. It is it, it, Instagram. I, I just started Instagram in October, so I'm still getting used to that, but I didn't realize that you would get people from Russia. That's, that's kind of, yeah, I've got uh, a lot of people, like I said, Russia, Brazil, Japan. Um, there's some people that are doing some really awesome things from Japan with, wow. I don't know what paints they have over there, but they're not the same as ours. That's for sure. Really? They get the, the, the most brilliant colors. I don't even know how they, they're getting them, but I'm always talking to them like, hey, and I thank God for Google Translate. Because <laughs> I can talk to anybody anywhere now as long as I know where they're from. That, yeah, no kidding. you got to be careful, though, because Google Translate sometimes translates wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it gets it close enough to where they know that, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So Julia has a question for you. 
Um, how old yes. were you when you found out you liked to paint? Is that just something recent or? Um, what was last September? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, real, honestly, I never did anything. I was not artistic in high school. Okay. Um, when I joined the army, I mean, I was like really not artistic in high school. Um, <laughs> when I joined the army, I had a desk job um, after I got a shoulder injury um, and started drawing and kind of taught myself how to draw is like the first time I drew something that was, that looked like what it was supposed to actually look like. Wow. Um, You're better than I am. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I honestly, I have a picture that my kids picked out when they were like six and three or something like that yeah. um, of Wolverine and Cyclops. And I've honestly been working on it for about 15 years and never <laughs> finished it. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well there's always that project we mean to do <laughs> it is it's rolled up in a tube in the closet with all of the other stuff that i never finished um but uh honestly i just happened to come across a youtube video of acrylic pouring it just like one of those crazy videos that just happens to show up in your feed and you're like how did that get get here how did i get to this point um, I'm sure many of you are on that rabbit hole now that everybody's stay at home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was watching <laughs> today, like, how did I want to learn how to make a go-kart? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even know I wanted to make a go-kart, but now I do. Yeah. YouTube is pretty much functioning off of AI right now, I think, because I'm getting suggested <laughs> videos that it's like, when in my lifetime have I ever wanted to make you know, jello because I hate jello, but I'm getting all these jello <laughs> recipes and it's like gross. I don't want to eat jello. But I think it's because I was looking up um, how to make um, um, pudding from scratch because uh, I want to find a different recipe because the recipe I have isn't the best. It's good, but it isn't the best. And I've been craving chocolate pudding. So, right on. Yeah. So I was just watching YouTube one day and oh gosh, I remember. Uh, I don't remember who it was that popped up, but I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I just started watching videos and I just kept watching more videos and more videos. And I was like, oh, I could totally do that. Yeah. So, and so, and that's so, how so, I ended so, up here. And <laughs> if I remember correctly, your wife got you uh, a gift of some painting lessons. Yeah, I got, uh, she got me for Christmas. Um, just this past Christmas, uh, Bob Ross painting class that's so awesome bob ross is my and favorite. yeah it, it came out great i was really surprised <laughs> and then we went out and bought all the oil paints and all the different mediums for that and i've got all that sitting over there in my little center of corner garage uh studio sorry studio studio yeah studio studio, it's studio. We're, we're official now we're we're you know we're youtubers mm -hmm. and we're official artists and Content get, creators. Yes, and we're content creators and influencers. I hate the word influencers, though. No, no, I'm not definitely not an influencer yet, but you know, <laughs> hey. Hey, you're doing great on your channel, though. I mean, I haven't seen a video that I'm like, nah, I don't really like that. Uh, most of your stuff, I would say, that I've seen, I don't think I've ever like binge, binge watched you. But when I'm stuck, I will go to certain artists, and you're one of them. So oh, that's cool. why it was really important for me to have you on this on this thing because you're my friend and I love your art and oh my gosh here he goes hang on we're gonna bring you bring you a full screen because he's doing the kiss pour everybody whisper it's like golf yeah because that's and more like Happy Gilmore golf so go ahead. <laughs> Oh, Tracy was here. Hello, Tracy. Goodbye, Tracy. She says, I'll catch the rest later. Got to get moving again. Oh, geez. I don't think that lady ever sleeps. <laughs> oh, 
Uh oh. Jason says, Chris, say I am Batman. I am Batman. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I still want to see you in a loincloth, though, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sure my wife wouldn't like that. <laughs> No one says it has to be only a line cloth. You could be wearing a line cloth under a moo moo. Because I think that would be hilarious. But hey, what do I know? <laughs> so, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh. That is stunning. Okay, now that I'm like thoroughly impressed. He's just going to glide it around with it on there. I see. I'd be afraid that the thing would go too fast and poop off and go. <laughs> you've got the, no. you've got the tilt it's, thing down though. Yeah. I've learned, I've learned how far to, to not tilt. I, my first one I did, I just like jacked up the corner and the whole thing went sliding off and I was like, Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, what has been your greatest accomplishment in your life or in your art? Oh, gosh. Uh, in my life? Uh, gosh, uh, I'd have to say being married for 26 years. I came from a, a family of multiple divorcees on both sides. I think my mom's been married and divorced five or six times or I don't even remember. Um, but, uh, actually me and both of my brothers have been married, uh, without getting divorced at all. Um, for, we're all in our like 20 years, I think my older brother is just about to hit 20 years, I think. Wow. Um, but, uh, also raising two boys that are outstanding and respectful and uh, still say yes sir no sir no, no ma'am yes ma'am to whoever cool. they meet doesn't doesn't matter um, and then having a granddaughter is <laughs> amazing um, but also I had a not as long as a military career as I wanted to as I, I had an injury and I got medically retired at uh, 13 years but I would definitely stayed in for 20 and then probably some more if I could have. Um, but I, I really enjoyed being a soldier and that was like my life goal and also my youngest son's goal. And he's also in the military now. He's at Fort Bragg. Okay. So he's, um, army. he's in the army. Yeah. Okay. So third generation army sounds like. Uh, like fourth or fifth. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's that's an honorable thing. I always, <clears throat> my dad was in the Navy, so I, I, I get the, the military brat thing. And, you know, and it just gave me an even more respect for people that have served our country. So um, hats off to you and your son and your forefathers or mothers. I don't know which side, which gender, but. Um, it was all my my dad, my grandfather, um, even my my wife's grandfather, was oh, wow. the first sergeant of my company when he was in. We didn't, I didn't know him. He, he was out way before I ever joined. Um, but we ended up, we were from the same unit, like thirty years apart. So. <laughs> oh wow! And you, um, what did you do in the military? I, well, when I went to join the military, my dad, who was in the military at the time, said, whatever you do, don't join the infantry. <laughs> and I went and did my thing, and they kept offering me infantry, and I was like, no, I don't want infantry. I don't want that. So I tried to be an MP, but I was too short because I'm only 5'5". Five five. Oh, wow. Um, at the time, you had to be 5'8". Um, there was height restrictions on just about everything. Um, right. So I was like, okay, I want to do military intelligence. So I went and did all that, and I missed passing a language test by, like, two points. Oh, geez. And instead of coming back to retake the test, I was just like, okay, what else do you got? And they put me in a room by myself for hours and hours. 
And every 20 minutes they'd come in and say, okay, we got infantry. And I was like, no, I don't want infantry. They'd go back out and they'd come back in. Okay, we got infantry. I was like, I don't want infantry. <laughs> I came in at end of the day. He was like, okay, here we go. I'll give you infantry with airborne option, which is jumping out of planes. Oh, good God. And I was like, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I never understood why someone would want to jump out of a perfectly serviceable aircraft. I will never understand <laughs> it, but hey, you guys go for it. So did you get this so, whole airborne thing? I did. I did that for every, uh, for eight years I did it at Fort Bragg. Um, I went to Korea, like at my four year mark, I went to Korea for a year and then came back to Fort Bragg. Um, and then, oh, I was, <laughs> I was at the swimming pool one day. I had this, when I had my shoulder injury, I got this really cush desk job. Um, yeah. working for the division commander and I had 24 hours on 48 hours off. And every day we would go to the swimming pool when we got off work, just from the time it opened till it closed. And I lost my ID card one day. So I had to go up and get a new ID card. And there's this guy sitting up there with his feet on the desk, this long blonde bangs, just like he looked like straight out of Baywatch. And I was like, dude, what? <laughs> what job is this? And he told me, and I was up for reenlistment and I ran straight down to my reenlistment guy and was like, I want to be a, it was a like 40, 71 something at the time, but now it's like a 42 alpha or whatever. And they were like, Hey, we have that. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so I reclassed to a personnel specialist. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I got, uh, a buddy of mine was leaving the army and we went to his uh, get out of the army luncheon. And when we got back, the phone was ringing and I answered it and they were like, Hey, is chambers there? And I was like, no, he just, he's out of the army. He's ETSing, you know, he's on leave. Um, yeah. what, what, what do you need help with? And they're like, well, this is so-and-so from the Pentagon. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right. I was like, who is this? And hung up on him. And they called back three more times. And I hung up on him three more times, going back and forth to different offices. Like, is this you? Are you calling my office? What are you doing? And ended up being the Pentagon. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> and they were like, well, who are you? And don't hang up this phone again. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm Sergeant Marino. Um, and they're like, they pulled out, they asked all my information, my social and all that. And they're like, you've been there for a really long time. And I was like, yes, I have. <laughs> and they're like, well, would you like to interview for the Secretary of Defense? And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> so uh, they, the next day, they sent somebody down to my office from Washington, D.C. to North Carolina. Um to interview me. And I went through the, the process of trying to get a job for the secretary of defense with like 2,500 other people. Yeah. Um, and after like two and a half months of interviews and going back and forth from this place to that place and security clearances and everything else, yeah. I got the job. Shut so, the door. That's awesome. I sure did. <laughs> That's awesome that you beat out like twenty. Did you say twenty five hundred people? Mm hmm. That's insane. So you worked at the? Did you work at the Pentagon then, or? I worked at the pen. No, I worked at the Pentagon. Um, oh. Up until nine eleven, I worked at the Pentagon. Wow. Wow. That's insane. Did were you there for nine eleven? I was, I worked there, but um, on that day, I was up at the NSA doing some training oh, wow. stuff. Oh, and wow. So. That's, that's deep. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like over here going. Oh, yeah, no, it is. It <laughs> is, yeah. Because, um, yeah, the, it's funny how everybody ha everybody knows somebody that was, was like a near miss or or knew someone that was there. And it's just it, that, that day, 
I mean, if you're old enough to remember, it's always going to be something that you remember. Kind of like when Kennedy was shot or when the Challenger blew up or, you mm -hmm. know, you always remember those things. And, you know, <clears throat> I think that, that that day brought us together as a country. And I, either that, I, I think that it did. I don't know about anybody else, but, um, you know, we saw that, you know, what other people see on a daily basis. We saw it for one day, you know? Granted, it was world epic kind of thing, but but um, everybody in the chat here is saying, thank you for your service. Um, let's see, I'm trying to scroll back. Brooke says, dude, you're awesome. Thank you for your service, seriously. Cheers and hats off to you. Blair says, bless your heart. Gina oh, Venus thank says, you guys. Thank you for your service. So yeah, everyone's here showing some mad respect to you, sir. So I mean, not only are you a talented artist, but you served our country and well, the United States, because we do have people here from other other countries, but you served the United States with honor and pride. And, and I personally thank you for that. Um, well, and I you. thank you, I thank you for coming on my show because I'm getting all like emotional. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when my son decided he wanted to join. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I had a friend of mine that was a firefighter um, in Michigan, and he went to go help with all the cleanup and stuff, and he actually passed away in a collapse. Um, I didn't find that out until about three years later when I was like trying to find him because he was a friend of mine, you know, and I hadn't heard from mm -hmm. him and I hadn't heard from him and I, and I finally found it on the internet. I'm, I'm the girl that can find you things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, so it's like, can you find like, me a rock hammer? Hey, I asked you, is it a pickaxe or an actual hammer made out of rock? Cause <laughs> I can probably find it. No, it's, it's a line from the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, exactly. It's a little peg hammer. <laughs> that, but I just, you know, I'm going to tunnel through my prison wall. Exactly. That's kind of how we all feel right <laughs> Into now. Into my neighbor's yard because he's got the swimming pool. <laughs> oh, everybody's saying where they were. And in, 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 uh, Doris lived in Baltimore in 9-11. Jason says 9-11 even affected us in Canada, you know. And he, Julia says, so sad. He probably had a lot of friends in the Pentagon building when that plane hit. Yeah. So luckily, uh, luckily it was early in the morning and there weren't a whole lot of people there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were enough people there, but there weren't as many people that would be there as if they hit it at three o'clock like, in the afternoon. Right. Right. In the middle of the, of the work day. <clears throat> so um, what has been your greatest struggle in, in your art or in your life, and, and how did you overcome it? Or are you still struggling with it? Uh, I'm, I, with art, I'm, I, th I think I'm hitting like a burnout kind of stage. I like struggle. Besides last night when I woke up and was like, hey, I'm going to go out and do this. It's like I post three videos a week. And I don't know how you do it every day. That's a man. You're you're a trooper for that because <laughs> I don't I'm edit like, my videos. Uh, so I take the easy way out and go live. That, <laughs> honestly, for me, the editing is the easiest part. It takes me 15 minutes to edit a video. Oh hell no! It, come, it takes, it takes hours. longer than that for me to come up with an idea of something that I think is going to turn out um, the way I envision it, and I have to think on it for a couple days. To be like, well, it worked that way. Are those colors right? And you know, yeah. but um, try experience. I don't know. It's that's been my that is well. Been that's my, how I came up with this this open yeah. cup kiss pour. I was like, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this. So and I like searched Google and YouTube and everything, and I couldn't come up with anything that anybody had done with it. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try that. Yeah. And you've got some really cool um, effects in there. Now, what do you use as your base? Is that 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 white? I, I can't remember. Did you say? It's I the yeah, remember. the color place, the color place Walmart interior okay. satin paint. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was. That's I I get the best effects with that. Like this over here, I always get. Well, not always, but most of the time I get these 
types of cells um, with that paint. And it's just different densities of paints. And, right. you know, do, do I want it to end up like this over here where the paint floats on top where I use thinner paint? And then yep. all this paint over here is from the base that came up. So it's, uh, it's just trial and error of stuff. And I just record whatever happens and put it out. So <laughs> it's, I don't do a painting and like, oh, I didn't like the way that came out and then scrap the video. I, I put it up anyway. So now do you, um, because all the videos I've seen have always been like wet, wet results. Have you ever do you do you post dry results on Instagram or? Um, no, I I have a couple here and there with dry results. I don't. They're just all sitting way over there in my on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about my shelf because yeah. The shelf. <laughs> you you. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no. You don't want to see my shelf. <laughs> well, that's just um, some of them. I got, I've got a 14 foot workbench in my garage uh, studio. Um, <laughs> but I've got all the, all the paintings that have dried and I didn't like them. I've got them all stacked over here, ready to gesso over. Yep. Um, so. I, I have a stack of, of those same paintings. And then I have another stack that needs to be finished. And I haven't gotten that far yet. <clears throat> I get too, like, into, like, uh, into studying. Because I'm, I'm always learning. And it's not so much the art part. It's more the YouTube part and the business side of it. Because I've owned another, I've owned other businesses and I wasn't very good at business. So I've been trying to get better at the business and having multiple revenue incomes and that kind of thing. So, but if you want to, it, you, the viewers out there, if you want to check out Chris's channel, I do have a link down in the description box below. Um, do you have a pay, PayPal or Patreon or anything? I do like have that? PayPal. I have okay. PayPal. The, uh, the links in my, I think it's the about section of my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, but if anybody's interested in any of my paintings, just email me. The email is in my about section on my YouTube channel. Okay. Well, yeah, because um, that's, you know, that's what I use, this, you know, these interviews for is to promote other artists and, and find out about them and get to know them. And so people know who they're buying from, you know, um, it's not necessarily, you know, just some schmo, you're, you know, You've been you've been doing this, you know. Granted, only a few months, but you actually have. I, I say it like I'm surprised, but you have a lot of, of a lot of talent, um, especially in color combinations. Because see, I would never put those colors together because I'd be like, oh, that's gonna be awful. But I love the colors of that and the effects in that. I want to see it dried. I want to see it dried though. I'll post something on probably Thursday. I still haven't edited my video for tomorrow yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it only takes you 15 minutes, Mr. I. That's true. I, actually, it's edited, and I just have to pick the song and put it on there. So, Where do you get your music? Um, I love using uh, either royalty-free music, or I go to Bandcamp and find artists, okay. uh, bandcamp.com. And there's okay. a lot of artists out there that just want to get their music out, and they'll give you permission to use their songs. Oh, awesome. Um, but the guy that I use most, his name is Adrian Von Ziegler. Okay. And he has a bazillion YouTube videos of his music. And oh, wow. he puts right on the description of every video he posts for every song. If you do YouTube videos, you can freely use my music as much as you want. And that's all the classical oh. composed fairy tale music that I use. Most of it yeah. comes from him. Well, I know I've noticed that a lot of your music is very Celtic, and you know, kind of. Folky. Yeah, I like the the Celtic and the Viking music, and yeah, yeah that really like gets that. my that, that blood strikes, pumping. I know it strikes a chord within me as well. So I'm just like that's. I think that's probably why I put. Makes me want to forge an axe. <laughs> In your <laughs> top. Saying your Batman. <laughs> right with my Batman goggles and my loincloth. <laughs> Be careful out there. <laughs> yes. So what would you tell 18-year-old you? What wisdom would you tell him? 
18 year old me. Mm -hmm. uh, don't drink so much when you're in the army, but <laughs> other than that, don't change anything. Don't change anything. Okay. Because uh, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't drink so much, though. That's kind of funny. <laughs> As you have a beer. <laughs> Could have made a couple better choices, if you, just a few. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I think we all have that, though. But, you know, they, sometimes there's that one little thing, you know, and, and yours is, you know, don't drink so much. And, and you know, I think I think youth is wasted on the young is what I really think. <laughs> and, I, and I'm <laughs> quoting someone there, but I can't think of who, who quoted it or who said it. But, um um, I, I th you know, I, I think you're true there because I think a lot of us spent a lot of time drinking and partying and having <laughs> a good time. But um, well, all of all of my friends that went to college straight out of high school all got expelled the first semester. Oh, um, I didn't have the money or the grades to go to college. Yeah. So, uh, and that was right as the first Gulf War kicked off. So I joined, I was still a senior in high school when I joined. Okay. Um, okay. But as soon as I graduated, I got that like a week after my graduation and then I went to basic training. So. Well, there you go. You just popped from one thing to another. Right. Okay. So for our Tish Talks, it's kind of become a thing the last couple of weeks is we do something called the lightning round where I ask you uh, this or that question. And, is this a drinking game? Um, oh. We make it a drinking that game. That was too, too much of a pause. <laughs> Way too much of a pause. I was like trying to how think to make it a drinking game. We could, after you be, okay, here we go. Every ask, question I drink. Exactly. There we go. After every question, you have a drink. And every answer. Will, Let's go with every answer. Every question. <laughs> okay, we can do every question and every answer. Then we're really in trouble. But okay. <laughs> so um, I have 13 questions here. Okay. And they are an and or, or this or that quest kind of question. And you just tell me which one you would choose over the other. Okay? Okay. Okay, so we are going to start right now. So, number one, cat or dog? Dog. Number two, pancakes or waffles? Both. <laughs> That's a very acceptable answer because I'm <laughs> at the same wife. time. Both. <laughs> both. We're going to put pancakes on top of our waffles with lots of bacon. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> number three, text message or call? Uh, either or. Either or. Okay. Either or. Uh, number four, library or museums? Museum. I uh -huh. hate reading. <laughs> I love reading, but it puts me and, to sleep. And, unless I, I've got to be like really invested in the topic. Yeah. Um, or else I don't even pick it up. Um, like the, the book Black Hawk Down before the movie ever came out. Oh, my God. I read that in one night. Oh, my God. And But other books... I I can't stand them. I I can't just sit there. My wife well, can about, sit there and read page after page after page, book after book after book, and I just I just can't do it. Well, what about like <laughs> Tom Clancy? He's very technical, like jargon and military and and that. He's a, his stuff's okay. Um, I've I've read a couple of his books, but again, I struggle to get through them. So okay. it's just a. I struggled to get through them because I don't understand all his technical jargon and it's like too much for my brain. It's just like, okay, I would rather read Anne Rice or Dean Coons or Stephen King. So, right. Um, Brad Meltzer is one of my, one okay. of my go-to. Um, he does like this kind of spy novel, but also kind of like Dan Brown okay. type books, but his, his books are really good. I like Dan Brown too. His, I've read all his stuff. Okay. Like the angels and demons and that, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've read all of his. Well, not all of his, but I read. I, I'd always read the book before I went and saw the movie. I always was sorely disappointed, but I, I just wanted to go in knowing what the storyline was, you know, and see how mm -hmm. well they did with it, because movies nowadays, it's like, it's like they're kind of lacking. So I gotta like, like go in there and expect to be like, 
entertained, if not like be true to the book. So yeah, they could they could do so much more with movies if they're making you know four part Harry Potter series movies for just the last movie or whatever it was. They they right. could have done so much better with so many movies. Yeah, I know. It's it's and Hollywood's remaking so much stuff now that it's just stupid. Oh, that's so annoying. As long as they don't try and remake the Princess Bride, I'm okay. Because <laughs> no one can say inconceivable. Inconceivable. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> and I'm sorry, no one will replace Andre the Giant. I'm sorry, that's mm-hmm. not gonna happen. Okay, let's get back onto the lightning round. Next, next. Sorry, I was. <laughs> I was yeah. No, no, we, we we were we were we were discussing discussing amongst ourselves. Um, so number five, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate all day. All day. I love you. Number all six. Day. <laughs> number six, car or motorcycle? Ah, uh, gosh. I think each has their place. So okay. I'm I'm a truck guy myself, but I love classic hot rods. I've loved motorcycles since the day I can ever remember seeing one. I think my dad had like a 1974 Honda 250 back in the day. It was gold. I remember it. Um, and I've, I've loved motorcycles uh, ever since. But um, give me a 72 Chevelle Super Sport any day. Yeah, I'm a 1972 Dodge. Dodge, um, what is it called? Golly, now I can't think of it. Charger. <laughs> Dodge Charger. I was like, I don't know, a Dodge Dart? Dodge, no, God no. God no. The Dart was the, the, the cringe uh, Pinto? moment. <laughs> Pinto? Yeah. No, we're not going to go there because, yeah, I, there are things done in a Pinto that I don't need to admit to. Um, <laughs> number seven, comedy or horror? Uh, both. I, I'm a fan of both, even some rom-coms here along the way. I'm okay. fond of like how to lose a t- guy in 10 days. Love that movie. You know, I haven't seen that one. I've wanted to, but it's, it's the- our love burn. <laughs> you let it die. <laughs> For some reason that just strikes me as I can see that in the, in that movie, but I just, there's certain movies I haven't seen. It's like, I used to work in a movie theater and there are movies I haven't seen that came out when I was working at the movie theater, like office space. I have never seen Office Space from front to end. I have <laughs> That's seen my I've seen I've seen the movie in five minute segments because when you work at the movie theater, you have to go in and do a film check, which means you watch five or ten minutes and then you go to the next theater and you do it right. all night long. So I've seen in segments of it. So I've never seen the whole thing. I need to sit down and watch it. Okay, number eight, Superman or Batman? <laughs> Come on. Ah, uh, Superman. Oh, wow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say I, I'm I, I appreciate both, but I'm Batman. <laughs> Number nine, fruits or vegetables? Uh, as long as it's not a green pepper, both. <laughs> <laughs> I hate green peppers. Oh my god. It's like an underripe it's an underripe red bell pepper. Okay. That's, That's exactly what it is. It's, it's an unripened other pepper. Exactly. And it's yeah. Disgusting. It's yes. bitter and disgusting. And you know what? Jalapeno peppers are just spicy bell peppers. That's all they are. Spicy. They're good though. I oh, I love no. the spice. No. Go for habanero. They have at least a little bit of flavor. <laughs> okay, number 10, ketchup or mustard? Both. Okay. Uh, number 11, Alaska or Hawaii? <laughs> Better go to Hawaii because I don't <laughs> even go to the freezer section. <laughs> no so, way. So you've got the, the whole back issues where cold is bad juju for you. Yeah. Okay, so, well... Since we know that, this is kind of irrelevant, but mountains or beach? Uh, both. I love the mountains, and as long as it's not snowing on them, and <laughs> I love the beach. See, I love the mountains. I, I, I love the mountains. I, I, just, I lived in Colorado for a minute, and yeah, I'll never forget that. So, and last but not least, number 13, pasta or pizza? 
Yes. <laughs> he says food. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. What's your favorite? I just made gnocchi the other night. Oh. Like home, homemade fresh gnocchi, so. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So what's your favorite topping on pizza? Uh, gosh. Pepperoni and mushrooms, probably. Okay. Okay. I can have respect for that. If you were going to say, you know, something weird like anchovies, then I was going to be like, dude, no. you can't. I was going to be like, dude, you can't be my I'm brother. I'm not a freak. <laughs> <laughs> anchovies. <laughs> I want to eat the little fish. And <laughs> Unless it's in Caesar dressing. No. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, anchovies are in Caesar dressing, eh? Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming online with me tonight and doing this interview and being so honest with us and, you know, showing us so much love. You are an awesome artist. You are an even more awesome friend, and I appreciate you so very much. And I, well, I appreciate you. being here. Thank you. I thank you for being here. And I thank you guys for being here and being yes, awesome. Yes, thank you guys. And if you are new to our channel, let me welcome you. I'm sorry it took me so long. Um, if you like our vibe and want to join our little tribe, all you got to do is click subscribe. <laughs> thank you for your help, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. Remember, be kind to one another. Peace, love, and happiness. Be safe.